Hello, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. Welcome to the newest episode of Noobs and Knockouts podcast. I'm Austin. That's me. I'm a knockout. I've watched a lot of wrestling. I'm David. I'm a noob. That's me. I've watched a little bit of wrestling. Uh, uh, um, well, and 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 guys, here's a crazy plot twist for you. I'm gonna watch more today. <laughs> What? That's what we're gonna do today? I know, I know. But but uh, I also I can't help but notice that that uh that there is a mysterious third uh third entity with us in our little there, virtual space here. There is today for our Christmas special, we have a special guest, one of our best friends, Claire. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god. Hi guys. I guess I would be considered a noob because I've never I I've I don't think I've ever really watched it. I've I've been like aware of it on the margins as someone who's like mm-hmm. big into for some reason a lot of film people are big wrestling fans and I've been in a lot of like movie communities mm-hmm. so I've I've been very aware of it but just never watched it I did not know that but ah, I, I guess it makes a little bit of sense if you, I think mm-hmm. but yeah uh, I'm 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 glad to I'm glad to now not be the least experienced person on this podcast yeah. Uh, Excellent. But so, as I mentioned, today is our Christmas special episode, and we're going to watch an episode of Monday Night Raw. I will explain that for Claire in a second. Mm -hmm. uh, That aired on December 24th, 2012. Uh, As I've mentioned a few times on this podcast, Apocalypse Year. Do they bring up the apocalypse at all? Uh, no, I don't think they did, actually. Well, I think that day might have was supposed to be the end of the world, right? It was all bad. Oh my god, was it? I remember, I remember, all I remember is, like, on that day, I went to see a Pirates of the Caribbean movie with a couple of my friends. <laughs> That's how you wanted the last day on Earth to go for you, yes. huh? Yes, and, and, and it was, and the worst part, it was, it was, it was the fourth one. <laughs> I saw that one in theaters, not gonna lie, but That's anyway. one with Penelope Cruz and the Fountain of Youth. Yes, yep. it is. <laughs> I was kind of, anyway, we're not, this isn't a Pirates of the Caribbean podcast. I'm not going to get my thoughts on the fourth movie. But yeah, as I was saying, as, as, yeah, as I said on the podcast a few times before, WWE airs their shows 52 weeks a year with no breaks at all. Holidays don't matter. We're going to air a show. The last live show I went to aired on the 4th of July. So, but this episode was thankfully pre-taped so that, you know, the wrestlers could be home for Christmas, but it still aired on Christmas Eve. And the, 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 the only major plot thread that they, uh, um, advertised was that this episode will be hosted by Santa Claus. <laughs> Yep. And, th- and thankfully, I know what that means, and I've not told them anything about it. <laughs> He's told us that it's going to happen. And that you probably can't guess what it is, what will happen a bit with that, mm-hmm. but it, I'm so ready for it. But okay, I went into this hoping that I probably wouldn't have to do a lot of work in terms of research for the storylines. And then the storylines were actually kind of complex and interesting, so I guess I have to explain. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, f- so just to, just to be clear, is that in WWE there is Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. Those story there are storylines that happen on each show, and they sometimes kind of jump ship between shows, but not always. Some of them only take really take place on one show a week. Uh, so the biggest shows on Raw is first for the top championship, uh, the WWE Championship being held currently by CM Punk. Uh, me and David are big fans of his from last week. Yeah. And he's kind of, he's, kinda, he's like a loose cannon rebel type. He's, he'll, he's willing to say anything and kind of, you never know what's going to happen with he's, what he's going to say. Or do. Shakespearean. I'm telling you. <laughs> so right now he's heel again. He was a baby face when he first started being the champion, but, um, he decided he he turned heel, became a bad guy in the middle of his championship reign because he felt he was being disrespected. He that he was mm-hmm. that enough people didn't appreciate him as champion. And to be fair, he kind of had a point about that because despite being the champion, uh, I'll say this is from the time that he be- first became champion to the time that he first turned heel, he main evented zero pay-per-views as WWE champion, even though he's supposed to be the number one guy. Meanwhile, John Cena, by comparison, had main evented four pay-per-views in the same time frame. So he had a kind of a justifiable grievance that, like, even when I'm the champion, 
everybody likes John Cena more than I did, more than me. Quick question. Quick question. Sure. So was CM Punk the person, not the character? Was that a grievance he also had, considering that would have probably affected his like pay? Um, And then they interwove it within the story? I feel like I, as like, the actor would also be kind of pissed mm-hmm. off. And, you know, no. they were not intending to, it wasn't really intentional of like, I don't think anyway of it, like to incorporate that in, but he was also legitimately mad about that in real life. And that was a big factor. He left the company in 2014 okay. and that kind of thing was a big reason why, but the storyline, he wasn't really supposed to be based on his actual feelings. <clears throat> I thought you said. So I thought you said. Was, last week, I thought you said last week. The the matches was that pre-planned and written, or did that just happen? Um, uh, I th- I don't think it was intentional that they were. I don't think they were like, okay, we're going to intentionally not give him bigger, better uh, positioning on pay per views so that he can later be mad about it. I think mm-hmm. it just happened, and then they capitalized on it when they wanted him to kind of be it be a bad right. guy again. Wait, I thought you said I thought you said last week that that he that that those were reflective of some of his real um what we were doing what they were doing last week was but this isn't. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So this so this is still like so this is kind of out of the territory of him pitching his um Yeah, no. Th- la- what we did last week doesn't what we did last week does not really have a big effect on this. Okay. So in addition to being uh, being the the now the ba- a bad guy, he signs up with Paul Heyman, who is kind of a slimy sports agent type of a character. Question. And, Sorry, it's fine. Is he uh you know Jewish? Coincidentally, he is, but that's not really played up in his character at all. <laughs> Yeah, they do. I don't think they code that super hard on him. No, it's they don't. As someone who's watched a lot of all Heyman's work, that happens a lot in those sort of things. No, if, I, any, I, if, I if anything, when, when when I first saw Paul Heyman in action, uh, when we did our very first episode, I thought he was supposed to be coded gay, but even that, I, I guess, wasn't the case. No, he's never been coded Jewish, but he is. He is Jewish in real life. <laughs> just just like, like your happenstance this time. Yeah, actually. But anyway, so Heyman kind of exists to pump up uh, Punk's ego even more and kind of make him <laughs> even more mad that the, that the people don't respect him. And as further proof of that being right, the previous week's episode of this was something called the Slammy Awards, which is <laughs> WWE's fake <laughs> awards show. <laughs> and... I beg your pardon. <laughs> the Slammy Awards, the WWE semi regular fake awards show. <laughs> you heard me. I did hear you. I, I, I did indeed with my own two ears. Okay. Hear those words emerge from your mouth. Prepare for me to do that a lot. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, you should you should be you should be very prepared, Claire, to, to laugh your ass off this whole time. Oh, I'm no, telling this, you, this shit's so funny. This is gonna be great. But yeah, so and dur- at the Slammy Awards, they were had superstar of the year. And despite the fact that, du- that CM Punk has been the only WWE champion in all of 2012, John Cena was voted superstar of the year. <laughs> Oh, no. And now, and so CM Punk is just even more mad. But right now, but right now, he's not actually feuding with John Cena. We'll get to what Cena's doing in a in a second. He's uh, currently feuding with a guy named Ryback, and Ryback is basically just a big meathead jock dude in a singlet. I, he doesn't. He's kind of cool, or he was when I liked in 2012. I guess I liked him, but he doesn't really have a whole lot more going for him beyond that. Um, so that kind of, that kind of covers that. Oh, oh, I will say, um, CM Punk has also been like having more ridiculous ways to avoid losing his matches recently. So his first match with Ryback, he won because Paul Heyman paid off the referee, the cr- a referee to be crooked and cheat and punch Ryback in the balls and <laughs> and Punk won. And so... Oh, get ready for the absolute insane drama that happens on these shows, Claire. <laughs> oh, see, uh, the best part is, best part is, CM Punk is is like when when he gets to play heel, he's such a little shit about everything. He's such, like he's a, week, he's such a smarmy asshole. <laughs> yeah, like 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 last week we watched uh, we like the the episode we watched. He wrestled in the very first match of the night, um, and he just like 
left halfway through. He just walked out and just like bitch quit on it. It was so no, great. That's a classic heel move of being like, well, fuck this. I'm just going to leave now. <laughs> yeah. Leaving poor Kane to just kind of stand there like. Oh, Kane's on this episode, oh, David. Get yeah. Who's that? Anyway. Oh, I'll Kane. explain Kane when we get to him. Okay, okay. Kane? Ah, no, but now that you say that. <laughs> uh so and the and his most recent punk's most recent match was with john cena and ryback at the same time but he won because of the debut of my favorite team ever the shield the shield are three dudes who like show up in swat gear and they claim to fight the injustices of wwe uh, but at this point in time, they're like covertly paid off mercenaries by, by Heyman to protect punk, but they're currently like pretending that's not what they're doing, even though they spend all their time beating up CM Punk's biggest rivals. They're, they're like, no, nah, there's no association here at all. What are you talking about? <laughs> so yeah. that's the big top storyline there. The next biggest is to do with, uh, John Cena and, and, this is a Divas storyline, David. Oh, wait, 2012 Divas. No, we're not quite yes. there yet. We're not quite there yet. Yes. The um. Div- the, the Div- in WWE, they ha- they call the, re- the male wrestlers superstars. And at this point in time, they called all the women wrestlers Divas. Yeah. Yes. They, 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 did, they did change it in 2014. 16. Oh, 2016. 2016, they ditched that name, and they're stars too. But but right now, <laughs> me and David complain a lot about the divas of this era for two reasons: one, the name; um, two, a lot of, they don't get a lot of time on TV. Actually, three reasons, I guess. And the oh. third thing is all their characters are there are two there are two kinds of characters. If you're a good guy diva, then your then your character is you're hot. If you're bad, if you're a bad guy, your character is you're hot, but you're also bitchy. (laughs) Actually, actually, uh, I'd like to add to that. There's a fourth reason. Personally, I I don't like the diva stuff of this era is that goddamn butterfly belt. It's so fucking smarmy. Yeah, their championship belt is literally a pink butterfly. pink butterfly. Why would you? It's disgusting. It's so stupid. Yeah, no. And, and, and to, and, and, and to, to. Uh, just just to give some context from stuff we talked about with the divas last uh, <laughs> last week is um, n- in case you're wondering who likes this, the answer was some people backstage, I guess. Enough to yeah. keep it around for a yeah, while. Yeah, at this point in time, the head of talent relations for WWE just kind of wanted to hire fitness models and teach them to wrestle just enough to be able to be on TV, and they were just there to be eye candy and nothing, and literally nothing else. But hope, but wow, wowzy, David! This week, the number two storyline features a woman. This is an incredible time. <laughs> anyway. and, like matched up with Cena. Uh, yes, in a romantic context, but here's oh, the God damn it! <laughs> I was so, so excited! It's like every other Marvel movie. A, yep. Where you're like, a woman superhero's in it, you're like, oh, and they're like, to fuck Ant-Man! And you're like, oh. <laughs> anyway, so, so AJ Lee, um, she was super popular with the internet at this point in time, because instead of being one of the, you know, stereotypical fitness model types, she was a lot, uh, she wasn't as she didn't have the same body or look. And also she was a super nerd in real life who actually liked wrestling. So she, so all the internet wrestling nerds also liked her. Dude, AJ's great. She is actually pretty good. She's also very, she's pretty talented for this time period of time. And, but right now she's in kind of her biggest career storyline where she kind of hops between different, a lot of different romance. She's kind of romantically interested in a lot of different men on the roster throughout the course of the year. (laughs) And most recently her thing was she was the general manager of raw, which means she's the person in charge of raw in, in story. But she resigned from that position because of uh, allegations of an affair with a male superstar. And the accusations were brought forth by David and I's favorite Karen, Vicky Guerrero. Yes. I love Vicky. You'll, excuse me. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. You, no, you'll understand when you see her. 
Claire. But she comes forth with the accusations, and she has like evidence that she that AJ was messing around with John Cena, and they deny the allegations until they choose not to deny the allegations. And the and the and the result of that is Vicky gets the job of of being in charge of Raw. And other than that, there's no consequences though. Like whatever she was, ho- whatever punishment she was hoping for, for AJ Lee, uh, that didn't happen because Vince McMahon didn't care in storyline. He didn't care. <laughs> yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that, that's just Vince McMahon of this era. He doesn't care, especially if Vicky's involved. Yeah. Uh, I would say it's a little, it's fun. It's, uh, it's, I assume some of the humor of it all is the hypocrisy because Vicky Guerrero has been in charge of raw or SmackDown before. And she's had plenty of storylines where she got a, a romantically entangled, with the rest with the male wrestlers. Yep. But anyway, so AJ and Cena and basically but before she was in charge of Raw, Vicky Guerrero was a manager for a wrestler whose name is Dolph Ziggler and his character is Douche is Douche Bro. That's about the yep. best I can he is. He's, he's like this obnoxious show off asshole with bleach blonde hair and he's Which in just, a way, in a way, perfect client for Vicky Guerrero. He is. But so Cena and, and Dolph are now kind of fighting because AJ and Vicky are fighting. And Ziggler is also Mr. Money in the Bank. Uh, that's kind of a uni- uh, concept in WWE oh. where like you get a briefcase. And if you have the briefcase, you can challenge for the world championship whenever you want. Oh, that's key, no. And that's key wording there because it basically means when they say whenever you want, they mean that. So like. Generally, what happens with Money in the Bank is, like, in story, the champion will get, like, beaten down by someone or will be just be, like, bloody and injured and stuff. And then, the, and then the Money in the Bank holder will be like, yes, I want my championship match right now, please. Yeah, he'll, they, he, heels, heels tend to win Money in the Bank a lot because of, uh, because because of, of that. that. That's a, because that's a fun angle to play. Yeah. Um, uh, they, it's I mean, they, 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 basically, they, they basically Vicky Guerrero, the champion. Yeah, they kind of <laughs> cheat. Excuse me. They win the championship if clearly nefarious means because like it's not very sportsmanlike to do it, but who cares? <laughs> so mm-hmm. Cena has a match with Ziggler to do, for that briefcase at the most recent pay per view, and the match ends when AJ Lee t- betrays John Cena and helps Ziggler win the match. Bum bum bum. So she's now actually romantically inclined with Dolph Ziggler and she explains her actions as the as that you know she gave up her her job as the raw general manager for her relationship with Cena and to protect his reputation and all she got for it was Cena being very standoffish and not as into the relationship as she was mm-hmm. and kind of the ex and the in story that what you're supposed to think about this is the is both that like AJ she's crazy and that she's kind of just obsessive and more like too obsessive and too clingy so it's fine that Cena didn't really was didn't really put his all into the relationship. Okay. How can you do okay. Agent okay. Dirty like that? Okay. God. Okay. So is there a point in like it does it come with the name change where the entire point of the women is yeah. not Yes. To- we're in a couple of years from 2012 uh, is they're going to start taking women a lot more seriously as wrestlers and characters. Okay, good. And this never happens ever again. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. My, my intro to this kind of wrestling was watching glow. Yes. I, I just have higher expectations for female wrestlers. Yeah. I'm very oh, sorry. Well, I mean, I mean, if you want, if you want the 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 peak of those expectations, uh, we we do we uh, the AEW episode we watched was like was like if that if that's the kind of if if glow yeah, is kind of like, like the like, the, the, bar, the barometer you have for it then then women women's wrestling in in Amer- in North America has never been taken extremely seriously except for a few key points and like 2014 to now it's, yeah. So and now and now it's and now it's great. Um, yeah, but then uh, to, to, as, to, as, to, to repeat right a meme now, from the AEW ooh. episode, I want Nyla Rose to step on me. Um, but we're not that we're a long way off from that. 
Yeah, 2012 is not a great period of time. I think if there's anything good to be said of this of this of this time period is to say that like as much as the story with AJ is kind of gross and 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 you know a little sexist, the fact that she got a storyline is a big deal and the fact that also she was by far the most popular wo- woman in the company despite not actively wrestling at this point, which feels like it proves my point if that like all you really had to do was give them sto- women storylines, and they would have been more popular. It, like the no, fact that, that they also sounds like the MCU, Jesus Christ, <laughs> <laughs> which is which is even more infuriating because AJ's the, the most popular, and this is the story she gets. Like, come right. on, mm-hmm. AJ rules. You can't do that to her. God, yeah. So that's so that's that's the number two story. The number three story would be, and this is the last one I'm going to do a lot of talk on because I don't think any of the others are going to be super important. Is yeah, the tag? It, it, it's 2010s WWE. It's right. we got our kind of main ones, and then all the rest is. Bleh. Yeah, is uh, the tag team championships uh, currently held by Team Hell No, which is Kane and Daniel Bryan. So now we get to talk about Kane and Daniel yeah. Bryan as well. It's Daniel Bryan. Kane is a, supposed to be a demon. His nickname is the is the devil's favorite demon. He's at, he's actually kind of super chill at this point in time, but that's because basically he got when AJ is he the devil's favorite demon. He's a good buddy. He's like, hey man. Yeah, he's like, hey. <laughs> he's like, hey. He's, he's just, he's... Wait, wait. If he's super chill, is this after like is this after heel anger management? I was about to mention that. So, yes! so how did Daniel Bryan, what? Daniel Bryan is this short, vegan, bearded, crazy man. That's the best way I can describe him. How, so how did those two get together as a team? Well, they were both romantically involved with AJ Lee as, as you know, as hard oh as far as much earlier. So when a, but when AJ, um, became raw general manager she forced both of them to attend anger management classes which admittedly they both deserved it they're both nuts <laughs> so they attend anger management and they bond over the fact that both of them think this is stupid <laughs> And so they become an odd couple's barely functioning tag team where like Kane is the more level-headed of the two okay. And Daniel Bryan just, like, kind of goes on this downward slide of just getting more and more pathetic to the point where, like, he has this whole backstage drama thing where, like, Kane is considering replacing him and he has to, like, fight for his position on Kane's tag team. No, and yeah. It, it's, all, it's all just so no. pathetic. It's Kane amazing. and Daniel Bryan are literally hilarious. And I'm, and I'm, and this is, like, their peak, but they're the tag team champions. And right now, the team that's facing the, chasing the most is the Shield that I mentioned earlier. Um, when they're not beating up CM Punk's biggest rivals and pretending they aren't associated with each other at all, they're chasing after Kane and Daniel Bryan because according to them, you know, they, they are like the shield. They're like blood brothers, man. And they think it's offensive that a team that can barely function together as friends is that are the tag team champions. They, they find that personally offensive. (laughs) So they, so they want a a piece of, of, uh, of Kane and Daniel Bryan. So, uh, the, just to kind of quick run through some of the other story, the, some of the other stories going on right now, I doubt they'll be that important. Um, the world heavyweight championship scene, I didn't explain it at the beginning, but basically the, the tier system for championships is tier one is the WWE championship. Tier one B is the world heavyweight championship. Tier two is the intercontinental championship and the United States championship. And technically the tag team champions and the divas champions, but it, it all just kind of, those all, those four kind of just become interchangeable and in how important they are at any given point in time. Um, so the world heavyweight championship is between the champion is the big show whose thing is he's seven foot tall and 400 pounds. He's a giant, but he's a heel now. So he's, so he's a giant, but he's also a jerk about it. Hmm. And he's fighting Seamus, whose thing is he's Irish. He likes fighting. He likes drinking. Ta-da! <laughs> he's, 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 a, he's a big boy with big spiky red hair. You, you, yeah. you get the pretty much as soon as you see him. And they have some and they have some fun like having big beefy boys punching each other fights. And so, okay, there's that. 
The Divas Championship actually kind of has a story right now. So weird. The current Divas Champion is Eve Torres, who's hot but bitchy. Huh. <laughs> And she's fight, and she's fight. She's kind of feuding with Caitlyn, who is hot, but also she's super, super strong for this period of time. She's not a jacked, and and so right now Eve is ducking fighting Caitlyn because she knows that if Kate, if she actually has to fight Caitlyn straight up, Caitlyn will break her in two. <laughs> And then the U.S. Championship, I don't think has a storyline right now, but the current champion is Antonio Cesaro. And his original character was that he was a Swiss rugby player who was too violent for rugby, so he got thrown out, kicked out of the rugby scene. And so well, now he's that he was Italian. <laughs> <laughs> he throws spaghetti at people. <laughs> That would be that would be so good. That. that would be that'd be pretty incredible. Does the thing, but yeah. So he's he's Swiss, but now he's the U.S. champion. And a super common thing that happens when you have um, non-American wrestlers be the U.S. champion and our heels, they'll be like, "Amer, I am the cha- I'm the champion of America, and America sucks." Yep. Yep. Class so much, so much hyper nationalism in, in WWE. So much. So that's his shtick right now is America sucks. And then uh, the Intercontinental Champion is Kofi Kingston, which we. T- <laughs> yes. I went through his backstory with David last week and I'll do it again this week. So, Kofi- hey. so when Kofi Kingston debuted, his gimmick was he was Jamaican. Even though he's not, he's from Ghana, West Africa. Um, and but eventually, there was a. Eventually, they just kind of dropped the accent that he did. He did a, a really goofy Jamaican accent, and so now his character is just kind of generic good guy. But all of his all of his gear and his like his whole aesthetic is still from when he was Jamaican. He, they just don't have the accent. Yeah. Yeah. It just it just disappears and they and they like kind of lampshade it sometimes and just never bring it up. Yeah. Again, other than that. Occasionally make jokes about Kofi used to having a Jamaican accent, but other than that, not important for anything. Yeah. Um and I'll and I'll be honest, uh this the, Kofi is intercontinental champion is so memorable I completely forgot it happened until I watched this episode. <laughs> oh god. Great. Oh no, that's sad. All right. Um I think that is everything I wanted to cover. Ooh. So all all the rest is is just all the crazy Christmassy twists and turns we're in for this show. Oh yeah, okay. Get ready. I want to w- see Gingerbread Man get slammed. Yes. <laughs> because WWE named ma- made Christmas puns for almost all the matches. Oh no. Let's, I mean, I'm not surprised. But oh no. I'll do a preview for you. The, so main, the main event is a miracle on 34th Street fight. <laughs> oh god. Yes. God. We have the, the, <laughs> the lumberjack frost match. I will not explain what any of these mean. Yes. But I will, the 12 days of Christmas 12 man tag match. And the women have a match, the Santa's Little Helpers match. I hate that so much. <laughs> of course, of course. Are they going to fuck Santa? Is that what you're <laughs> No, no, no. Can we not? I feel like I should end it on, are they going to fuck Santa? <laughs> oh. Well, uh, that will be the end of our first half of the show. Uh, we'll be right back with the back half. And we are back. Yeah. From we watched the January the December twenty fourth, twenty twelve episode of Monday Night Raw, and I, I promised the Santa Claus thing. I think I guess we should o- probably open with that. I I am still in in shock, uh, guys. I, I do have to I do have to ask you a question because uh, I my eyes aren't great, so I just want to double check with you guys because because they only really showed it once. Uh, <laughs> do you? You got did was it just me or did Santa Claus get hit by a car in this episode? I couldn't I couldn't tell. No, David, I couldn't tell. David, no. David he did not get hit by a car. He fell on a car. 
then fell on the ground and was hit by a tree. <laughs> In like perfect rhythm. It was like it was pong, more obvious pong, every time pong. I showed it. it so clearly it, not. He didn't even move, so that way he was backed up and it looked like he was hit mm-hmm. by the car he fell on top of the hood. The best part, of, the best part about them playing that moment about a billion goddamn times was how, like, each time you saw another layer of how, like, fake it was. So yeah. it just, like, it lost the effect but became so much more delightfully silly. There's a way you can move to get on the car to make it look like it hit you, but mm-hmm. you just didn't do that. And you can, like, you can only see him, like, looking, you can see him, too, like, looking back for, like, the car, like, oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> Why was he driving in the arena? Oh, that's just that's just that, Alberto. The, the Rio like does day. that. Like that's that's kind of the way he comes into his matches because he's what? a rich asshole. That's why he do, he comes in in his fancy sports cars. I don't know why he showed up to this one like that though. I mean, he's supposed to be a face. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> Even though he was still effectively a heel for the entire episode. Mm-hmm. I oh god, this 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 episode was stuffed to the brim, dude. I, Jeez. I feel like- one more thing about this. I feel like the tree was the thing that took him out because he seemed okay. And it wasn't until the tree hit him that he seemed... The tree gave him a concussion. <laughs> yeah, that shit fell right on his face. That that was honestly a brutal looking hit. I was like, ooh, I don't want to have that happen to me. But it's interesting because he, in theory, would go down chimneys all the time. Yeah. And the are the thing he deals with the most. So That's... I don't understand. I don't. I you, you'd think like at this point he'd like kind of know the way of the Christmas tree, but I guess not. I, I maybe 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 Santa's is a bit more of like a like an inept douchebag than we all kind of thought. The the mighty Christmas tree has befall has 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 betrayed Santa. <laughs> true, true. Man, may, man, maybe maybe we should maybe we should like maybe maybe Austin, you and I need to hop on the 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 Harry Hanukkah wagon because like I I ain't see him doing I ain't see him doing any of that dumb shit. <laughs> all right, so I have. I, I have to ask yeah. um, for for um, for our very first time uh, watcher. What 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 was that like? Um, long. Yeah. My yeah. first thought is it was too much. I feel like if they mm-hmm. tightened it up, I would like it a lot more. I did enjoy it, mm-hmm. but I feel like there's a certain point. It's like. You know when you got a really big chocolate bar and you're like, "Fuck yeah, I'm gonna eat this whole thing." And then by the end, course of the way through, we were like, "I don't want to do this anymore," but like, mm-hmm. there's only a quarter left, so I've got to. So you know, it felt like that where you're like, "Oh, it's great," and then you're like, "I get, I get, I." That's enough. We're done. <laughs> We're done. Yeah, you know, yeah, I get. I get it. That, that person's gonna fight the other person, and I, I see, I see. Yeah. See, see, I went into my first episode of this. Austin kind of warned me about how long these episodes were, so I assumed you knew too. No. But you, oh no! Oh, sorry about that. I, I did intend. I did intend to mention that when we in the first half, and I just kind of forgot. So I'm sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> no, it's fine. It was yeah. We're here for a lot longer than Claire anticipated, but yeah, I didn't. I, I'm not mad about it. it no, was, I. Um, I well we'll see see this is even more we got to get clear back for a, for a Lucha Underground episode because those things are like forty five minutes yeah yeah Lucha Underground was an hour a piece, hour yeah. episode so it's nice yeah. and tight yeah um like yeah your, your complaint about Raw being too long is literally what everyone is everyone who has ever watched Raw in the last eight years has said so oh really they all yeah. think it's too long too yes every like all like pretty much any wrestling fan is like god damn it can Raw Raw is too fucking long but you but USA Network likes likes the ratings they get with wwe and wwe likes money so usa network paying them for three hours they'll get three hours <laughs> mr mcmahon what inspired you to extend raw to three hours money <laughs> i like money <laughs> yeah pretty much you have anything else to say to the people at home money <laughs> well well money and uh you like boobs yeah oh. yeah uh, uh, I mean, I mean, our audience for 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 what audience we have are already are already familiar with with Austin's and my to to, to pivot on that for a second. Austin's and my frustration with the divas, but this, this was, is this, our third episode in this of the, with was, divas. <laughs> this pretty bad, one. pretty bad. That was well, just too. Here's the issue, and I pointed it out to these two. The first fight mm-hmm. was between Pain 
and some dude with a mustache. Cody Rhodes for the Cody Rhodes. And he sucked. Yeah. But was like a main character who got to fight Kane. And then the next fight was the Divas, who were awesome. It actually they looked convincing the whole time. Mm-hmm. And it and it, it looked they were doing some cool stuff. But it just made me even more mad because they were so much better than the first mediocre man who went, but they are reduced to like titties. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But all of them are so much better than half of the men. Yeah. Well, because like, because, well, because they at this point, because especially if like this is the point where like AJ is kind of ascending in her, in her yes. like, role, um, this is the point where like they were starting to basically advocate for like, um, we were good this shit give us actual airtime you dick um so so that's so so it, you in identifying that you 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 touched on basically mm-hmm. what they were trying to go for um uh, but just Vince McMahon was is a, is a is a is a dumb fuck who 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 sometimes like takes a while to kind of kind of get with the mm-hmm. times yeah i have more stories about that than I'd like to tell in some places. Yeah. But yes. But yeah, at this point in time, the Divas division has a lot of talent. They're just not getting used at all. Yeah. Yeah. Like and, they've and- worn this ugly, like one of them had this hideous like, polka dot dress. And that, like, was, yeah. that was Natalia, and she was wearing that because okay. she normally wears pink. <laughs> but in fairness, they all of them have like weird costumes. It's not just them. Like yeah. I noticed uh, mm-hmm. Seamus had like a crucifix on his butt. Seamus like Seamus like for they they play up the Irish but like they simultaneously don't like they never like at least from what I've seen they never like really do a thing of like going really hard on Ireland it's just a bunch of like vague gestures towards like his personality being I'm Irish yeah that's 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 because you guys you've never seen like a what? He's like a hard seltzer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a way. Um, they never, it, it never like amounts to anything more than just like this mm-hmm. guy looks Irish. So let's like, mm-hmm. let's do the aesthetic, but like never, like I, I've never, I actually have never heard like I haven't heard Seamus cut a promo. So like we don't even get yeah. on a regular. Yeah, that, when he when he does do promos, that's when it comes a lot more obvious that his thing is, ha ha, I like drinking, I like fighting. <laughs> like I said, his personality is, I'm Irish. Yeah, yeah. I well, because well, th- I, I'm pretty sure Claire, that was the match that inspired you to say, I want to create a wrestling character who's just who's just green. A concept, yeah, yeah. Like, it, because. So I tend to really appreciate absurdism and surrealism and this comedy. I was telling this to in high school, I directed a short play called Drugs Are Bad with these like overreacting parents who instead of chewing out their kid for doing drugs or chewing them out for being a square and are <laughs> So what I did was I took the comedy and like turned it up a little too high. And I think that's what makes it more funny. Like there's a point where they find a time and Garfunkel see in his backpack. And yeah. Get mad. And instead of just like seeing it and putting it down, I had like a whole stack of blank CDs. And so I had mm-hmm. my actors completely shatter the CDs on stage. And then I, the actor who I had as the dad, he had a fake mustache. And at one point he got so angry, he ripped it off. It was stuff like that. <laughs> So I, I was just thinking, I think what would m- take this over for me is just such a level of uh, absurdity that it takes it back again. Because it's already camp on one level, but I think if it just bumped it up a notch, it would be perfect. So, yes. so one of the things I suggested was a character who is a concept, and I was thinking like the color green. Well, not the, a person whose deal is the color green. It is the color green as <laughs> as a, for some reason the color green is a wrestler. Yeah, somehow, and, 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 the color green goes in and suplex him. Oh no! I don't know, like, but, <laughs> so, so would his name be the color green, or would it just be like green? I think just green. <laughs> and then another character I had an idea for was a velociraptor. Just a velociraptor. It doesn't have a name. 
<laughs> for for our listeners, for like this isn't like Lucha, this isn't Luchasaurus level. This is just like no, no, a no, dude. No, no, no. Like no, like no. you ever see like Walking with Dinosaurs, the like the fucking arena show, like it's that shit. Like that, yeah. For some inexplicable reason, it decides not to eat people, but instead to fight them in the ring. <laughs> yep. I mean, it, I see the, it. it decides to follow the human rules of, of professional <laughs> yeah, fighting. <laughs> it respects the rules. Yeah. <laughs> Clever exactly. girl. Um, another idea I had was someone gets kicked or punched so hard and they're, they're attached to like a rig. They start to fly away. And they fly away, but it's not like at a reasonable speed. It's like they fly end up flying all the way off stage, and then the other. Yep. <laughs> so the other person wins. They just keep flying away. <laughs> I like. Yeah. I we, we determined during this episode, dear dear viewers, that Claire's like going to write for WWE one yeah. day because like because mm-hmm. like her shit's better than any like like the the the, the observation I made is uh for our for our keen eared viewers uh who remember Austin's much talk of Vince uh Vince Russo back in like the nineties early two thousands era Claire's like the anti Vince Russo where instead of making everything like really like grim dark and like and like meta and no we're just going straight into like it's all super silly but the super silliness is real this isn't a show like we're just this is this is like our world and you're and you're stuck here welcome to the circus baby yeah yeah, yeah. like the guy flies off and everyone's like well because well well, i I think we need to have you in the audience to like cut to to have reactions like that like oh right everyone else is Everyone else is like losing their shit, and Claire's just sitting there, like. Yeah, yeah. And then something else that came to mind, and keep in mind, I'm a queer person. This is the highest compliment. Uh, I find this whole production very, very um, extremely, extremely gay. Uh, I'm talking the speedos. I'm talking <laughs> the sweaty. I'm talking the grunts. Mm-hmm. We all see it. Let's embrace it. Let's go for it. I'm, I'm man t- is leaving so much money on the table by not going for it because what this reminds me of in a lot of ways is Drag Race. I love drag queens. I love Drag Race, and if you could combine those, in, I mean, wrestling is like drag in a way where it's like <laughs> heightened personalities and characters. And I feel like if they really just went the full way, Drag Race is incredibly lucrative. Like these people. Mm-hmm door skills and get hundreds of thousands of dollars so if they found a way to like <clears throat> fully embrace like the gayness of it then they could rake it in okay oh, so, what, so what i'm hearing is i know a few indie wrestlers to consider here for next for a next time <laughs> yeah oh and I my think something, i see something also another one of my ideas that sort of goes with the gay thing is that i was so interested in like those weird speedos it would be fun if for an attack they went to pull down one of their speedos but there was no you know you think like the thing would pop up but no instead it was like a smaller pair and it took two it's like I... Naruto, where under his mask is another mask they just keep going <laughs> I, I I just want to say like I I love like the level of commentary that Claire's bringing to this because this is like so like such a departure from no. like how we like, normally run through this, but I kind no, of love it. I'm so happy that Claire's our guest for this. I know this was like this is this I mean this is like why we gotta have like have like the guest stars of like our friend group on because we were talking about this like while we were watching the show we have kind of like a core group of like five friends um and like each of us would bring such a different perspective to this like I'm over here calling like WWE Shakespeare Claire's like all right what dumb crazy what like, if we could make it weirder like, yeah can I inject as like a as like a as like a film writer uh we have we have one friend who's basically just like a Disney princess who we've determined we got to like just show all of the diva shit to. And we have one friend who's just like such a consummate actor that like, just we got to get his like analysis of these like performances. <laughs> so like, this is, performances. yeah, no, keep going. Hold on. Okay. No, no, this, no, this is just like, this is, this is just like such a delight. I just want to like throw in there to have like, to have the clear perspective on all this of like, of like, man, this is gay. 
How can we make it gayer? Let's lean yeah. in, pal. Lean in. You gotta lean in. We gotta. I, I mean, I yeah, no, so much lucrative. I it, look. I know that we we have a big kind of like internet kerfuffle right now with like WWE screwing over their wrestlers having like Twitch channels and stuff. But I'm just saying, some of these dudes could start OnlyFans and make bank off it. So like, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> WWE unfortunately isn't allow them to have. Oh, you hate to see it. I mean, I'm not surprised. They got to be t- like PG-13 now, but like TV PG. PG. Okay, hold on. Is it that PG if they promote the event that they're doing as hosted by Santa, which encourages a lot of kids who still believe in Santa to show up to the event where Santa is immediately mortally injured, <laughs> thus traumatizing them for the rest of their days? It's fine, Claire, because he recovered. He His heart monitor is Jingle Bell, played Jingle Bells. <laughs> He got on like that was almost it was almost weirdly realistic after he unrealistically hit the car and then it was like a whole medical team and everyone was freaking out and he went on a oh. stretcher. Oh, yep. that's a common thing to have happen. They have like fake medical people. Yeah, they that do that. Like, that is a common trope, and they like, do that every time. Last week, last week, what we watched, um, Big Show, uh, who was who was the the the, the one dude this week, uh, he last week got knocked down by world's strongest man, Mark Henry, and had to be carried out. And he had to be stretched on a stretcher, you know, air quotes, heavy air quotes, because of course he was fine. Um, yeah, but they play that they play that shit up and to to various levels of effectiveness. But like when it's Santa Claus that you're seeing it happen to, <laughs> something distinctly disturbing about it. I think it's funny, but for those kids, oh. it's definitely not. <laughs> oh, that was the funniest shit I've ever seen. But when you have, and in a way, the like line of children that were on like the the the, the yeah. edge of the Who thing there, genuinely concerned about it. Or they are like, like saw it happen inches from their face. I can only imagine like they looked like they looked like they they were like they they weren't sure how to process that. Like they were like they never it never crossed their minds that Santa Claus could could ever be struck by a moving vehicle and all of a sudden there it was right in front of them. And they more than traumatized, they just looked like they weren't sure how to process that. Which I'm sure then they like, traumatization. Who was, the guy that hit Who was the guy in the car again? Alberto, Alberto Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio was taking revenge uh, because his grandma was the grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Claire came up with some good headcanon during this episode. Yeah, no. The one, <laughs> the one who, you know, got run over by a reindeer, and so he was like, <laughs> yeah. you want a taste of vehicular manslaughter? Here we go. <laughs> you want a I taste of... I imagine, I imagine Santa never saw a day court for that. <laughs> um, oh. I Excuse you, I watched the animated cartoon. Oh, no. yeah, 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 yeah. He no, absolutely no. did go to court canon. for that. Not canon. What? No. Not canon. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Claire oh, on this I'm one, sorry. dude. Were they going to sue the pants off of Santa because Grandma <laughs> wanted her to? I have- <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh, God. I thought Stop. about I thought about trying to come up with parody lyrics about Santa getting run over by a sports car, but I didn't, I didn't figure out anything beyond the first line. See, see, I, I, I'm, I'm realizing slowly but surely, uh, Austin, you and I actually have, have been trapped into, uh, into an evil plot by Claire because this is slowly turning into like the resurgence of shut up and uh, shut or get off the stage. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, what is this? A crossover episode? Yeah. For, 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 for context for our viewers, Claire had a short-lived podcast called Get Off the Stage, where she was like talking about random shit with people, including both Austin and I. Um, yeah. And like, and like, this is by nature of our friendship with Claire, just like by nature of my friendship with Austin. Whenever like we talk, Austin and I talk about shit. There, always it always has to get political at some point. By nature of our friendship with Claire, whenever we talk about shit, it always has to deviate off to some other random like pop culture thing that we then go on long ass tangents about. Um, so, so well played, madam. Uh, uh, well done. Uh, we talked again. Uh, this is the Claire show now. Uh-huh. <laughs> Claire has done it again. The Fiend. Again. Oh, no, that's a, that's a different wrestler, Austin. He's not here yet. <laughs> but in, in talking about performances, I would just like to point out how most of them are garbage, except for CM Punk. I thought actually he, he sounded like he was legitimately really pissed off. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's because in real life he was actually pissed off because mm-hmm. of John Cena. 
but also John Cena, because I feel like he has the perfect level. It seemed to me like the other wrestlers were going for, like, uh, aggressive, because, like, you know, I'm a wrestler, I'm supposed to be like that. Yeah. But it seemed like mm-hmm. John Cena was playing the character of a wrestler really well, where he had the yelling, but he definitely seemed like it was kind of a joke, and he knew that it, he was, like, in on the joke about it. Like, he knew what, for Santa! Like, that was... Yeah, yeah, like, like John Cena spent this whole episode, like... Like extent, like unhinging his jaw like a snake to like scream about how he's fighting for the for the honor of Santa Claus against Alberto Del Rio in the main event, um, and and so like like when Del Rio first comes backstage after you know maiming Santa Claus, like Cena's coming up and is just getting in his face and is like, what was that for? What was that all about? Um, and like. And then, and 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 then, when given the proposition to fight Del Rio for you know for revenge, he he beats his chest and screams out for Santa, and it was so <laughs> glorious. Yeah, oh, um, I wanted Santa to fight more in the final fight. I feel like me, he had one finishing. Mm-hmm. That's like he should have been the one to take him out. Like he should have, well, especially because as Austin realized. Right, an actual uh, ex wrestlers was playing Santa Claus. Cactus Jack, who we talked about in our 90s episode. Right. Uh, and that uh, might have been a situation where, I don't know, Mick Foley's kind of too old and too broken down, and maybe he didn't want to do a whole lot more of Santa than that, but it would have been cool. I felt like they were building it up too much. They just showed that clip of him being, <clears throat> can't put too many air quotes around this, hit by a car. <laughs> <laughs> Like they showed it too many times for it to, you know. They we got th- we got three medical updates on Santa Claus in the training yeah. room. <laughs> just like just, and, and I love how like we just how it took till like the last time to like actually see his boots. We didn't see much of him. Just we just saw his boots tapping along to his heart monitor, singing jingle bells. Mm-hmm. That what was this episode? What what shrooms were the writers on when they wrote this? Because the the more I say stuff from this episode out loud, the more I'm like, damn, this got weird. Like, weirder yeah. than normal. Yeah. I have to say it's very ballsy for them to do a lot of pre-recorded bits, especially considering they're terrible actors. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I was I was going to point out there is that, yeah, uh, most wrestling actor people are, are terrible actors. None of them are, I guess not none. There are like, I can think of like two who have legitimately <laughs> trained as actors. Yeah. But, you know, most of them are bad at it. Yeah. And it's something that kind of just comes with the territory. I was just saying, it reminds, me, it reminds me a lot of porn acting. And you expect the second that it gets to a point in a porn where they would start doing it. But instead of doing that, it it goes to fighting. It's like, mm-hmm. how will I ever pay for this pizza? And they like, I have an idea. And then they fight it out. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, well, it's, 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 instead of getting, instead of getting bedroom eyes, you get ring eyes. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> which is just like CM Punk's like bulged out, like, ah, look, uh, God, just everything in this episode was also, can we just talk for a second about how this episode started with a choir of everybody singing a oh, Lord. I, I, I had somehow posed that from my brain from two hours ago i can't even remember what song it was they were all just singing and they it were, was they like were, they were doing a they were doing jingle bells but they changed all the lyrics to fit yeah. like wrestling stuff and and john cena was conducting mm-hmm. like 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 Mickey Fantasmic conducting like just <laughs> waving wildly back and forth. I don't I don't understand this. I mean I get it I get it why but this episode was just what I beg your pardon and 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 and, and you, you, obviously we have the a plot of Santa Claus got run over I guess. I wonder if they were trying to reference the song while they were doing that bit. I I, <sighs> I, I, I want to believe. No, listen, but they didn't because they never brought it up. They didn't. They, yeah, you're right. They didn't. They should have done. Oh no, Santa got run over by a sports car or something like that. Yeah, is which the thing, thing is, I would believe it. Jerry Lawler's dumb fucking dad jokes. Like, why wouldn't he see? Anyway, sorry. There were a lot of Christmas puns in there. Like that one was set up. It was. It was right there. 
Yeah. Again, this is why we need you in the writer's room. Yeah. But what I, but what I was going to say is that I would I was I wouldn't be surprised because here's the thing. Uh, I've never talked about it, but like every story about Vince McMahon ever involves the fact that the guy is such a workaholic that he's pre- pretty much doesn't know pop culture outside of his own WWE bubble. So I'm willing to believe that 2012 was the first time he had ever heard Grandma got run over by a reindeer. <laughs> Well, maybe he hadn't heard it because even though the thing happened, they didn't acknowledge the song. It's true. I, I'm i still just so shocked that McMahon did not show up once in this episode. No, he like, didn't. I was, he's, maybe he would be Santa or something. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I, I feel like he's been Santa before. I'd have to check that. That sounds like a thing that's happened. That sounds like something he would do. But this, this. At this point in time, Vince McMahon has is has stopped being an on-screen character for the most part. He'll still show up every once in a while, but it's not a week-to-week thing. But the, but then he comes back for 2013. Yeah, again, that was one of his like rare appearances where oh, he didn't show up. Oh, yeah. okay. No, well, that's unfortunate. But still, <laughs> I, I I'm I'm just trying to remember like all the all the stuff that went because a this episode was like stuffed to the brim with like filler after filler. Um, as as and- I as I expected, I I, I pre warned about that because this is a pre taped episode taking place on Christmas Eve. I was not expecting a whole lot plot going on, yeah. but like the filler did still have mm. like like just the most random shit like there was, there was the harvard lawyer yeah who was <laughs> yes Dave, who was defending del rio theoretically in court it's i think it's insane that there's a real harvard educated lawyer who's a wrestler it's like when you watch the bachelor and you see someone who's like i'm a veterinary technician and it's like what are you doing here <laughs> you have a real job <laughs> real accomplishments what what do you I want it's, to be famous. I, I it's, guess. It's because he it's because Otunga really wanted to be like a wrestler slash actor. He didn't really want but he became he but he was smart enough to like go to law school in, at Harvard and uh, pass the bar. Uh, but then he's like, I really want to be an actor though. <laughs> I mean he, he gave a decent performance. I, I was like he I, I was saying I was saying during the match, kinda like Nyla Rose, he's one of those characters that like I didn't realize he was a heel until I started rooting for him, like, as if he were a baby face. And at that point, I didn't give a shit. I'm like, wait, no, he's, why are you booing him? He's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, yeah. I, because it looked like Santa fell on the car. You could make a case in court if he used the videotape that he faked it. Or he, he did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. He's so, told maybe. <laughs> maybe- Maybe he's maybe maybe like he's maybe he's a, he written as a heel just because Vince McMahon has like such a bone to pick with lawyers and the yeah. legal system. I would in fact believe that. Yeah. Uh, for for reference, Claire, uh, Vince McMahon has gotten in trouble with the law a couple times. Well, once very, once very, once very famously for uh, for uh, WWE's use of uh, of steroids. Use of steroids. Uh, but which. He- he oh, got out of that. Me those people use steroids. No, right. Oh, yeah. That's a whole. That's like a whole. That's a whole thing. But Vince I feel like having that much muscle mass would just be inconvenient after a while because you'd be like, yeah. <laughs> you'd be like, you'd be like, you'd be like in that one Kanye music video. Yeah. 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 Or like, uh, I don't. I don't know if you're familiar with Homestar and Runner, like Strong Mad, like the big. I one. I am not, but that sounds hysterical. Yeah. God. Yeah. So so or, or for Kingpin, some or Kingpin and into the Spider Verse. Yeah. Yes. Or even I, Kingpin normally, I guess he's usually. He's usually, he's usually a big it wasn't boy, that like, exaggerated. He wasn't that exaggerated. Yeah, in the Spider Verse. <laughs> yeah, no, you have a point. Well, because like, well, because the big offense, and, and this is kind of getting off track, but like, just again for for kind of Claire's content, like the big offenders of the day, you know, were like Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage. So like, you can see where that shit comes in. And yeah, they did have a bit of the old Big McLarge huge going. On. <laughs> Vince McMahon has always liked the Big McLarge huge, David. Yeah, it yeah, is his know, favorite aesthetic. Or the Especially other guy, the other guy saying. Wait, the other guy? Seamus, you mean? No, the one who sang. 
after he won. Oh, oh. Bill's dude. a great Kali fucking hell. Kali. <laughs> that dude. Large man. I don't think he's on roids, though. He's just a big man. He's a Largo Dudo. <laughs> like, his match was like, I don't even, like, remember anything about his match, aside from him just being big and and his and his friend jumping on the opponent. Mm-hmm. Who was that? Was that, the, that wasn't Orn, the Cody fight. No, no that Orn's, was... He was fighting Brad Maddox. Oh, yeah, who needed a job. There were so many... say a lot of things, but I won't remember anyone's name. <laughs> That's 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 me. That's my big meme in this show. I'm so already so- I'm used to it, Claire. Okay. Uh, Austin has had to suffer through me for the past like the past few months just butchering at the hell out of everybody's names. Yeah. I can give you a drag queen, you bring up a picture, I'll be able to name him, but I, I can't remember. I think it's because a lot of these characters don't have distinguishing personalities. They're all just like big, muscly dudes who want to fight. Hmm. No, Indeed. Uh, what a what a what a what a definite criticism that ha- that also comes up all the time. It does. Yeah, that is also a super common complaint about WWE that they don't give everybody enough personality. <laughs> because that's what I liked about Glo is seeing them build individual personalities, and that was really fun. And they did the one that was like a in universe episode of Glow. The best Glo. episode of Glow. <laughs> yeah. It's Actually, no. It, it's between that one and the one where they all switch characters, that was fun too. Oh but, yes, it was. Damn, I need to watch Glow now. Um, you do. Yeah, it's gone too soon. Gone rip. too soon, indeed. Ah, rip. Yeah, I heard about that. Um, but but yeah, no, it's it's. I I think I think it's a very much a thing of like Vince McMahon is a fan of his aesthetic, uh, and that kind of comes first before any other consideration, which is funny because like, um, this is this is an ongoing thing for me is like. After watching a lot of contemporary WWE and then watching an episode of contemporary AEW, like AEW is another big re- is the other big wrestling company right now. They, pick up they, like there's there's this difference of like they like their aesthetic too, but their aesthetic comes in such a different way that it feels like it feels like a standout. Whereas with WWE, it's just like. It's 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 just like each episode is Vince McMahon taking a fucking loaf of loaf of white bread and like un, <laughs> un, 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 untying it and dumping it out on the middle of a wrestling yeah. mat. I mean, do you have to watch that for three hours? Far far too much of me trying to explain what's going on in these episodes is like they are a gen- if I say the phrase generic good or bad guy or their aesthetic is. Yeah. yeah. And like I like I have to I can't say anything else. Yeah, I mean we did get a decent amount of like personality in this. I will say like like you know uh, people like Big Show even if they don't have much of a character they're able to bank off just like their distinguishing features alone. So like even though Seamus has the personality of a of a fucking wooden board in an Irish pub, uh, it was still interesting to watch him go up against Big Show because like. Because you could see Big Show just being, you know, all stalwart and giant, and you're like, dang, how's he gonna pull this one off? Yeah, and, uh, you know, and we we kind of walked back around it, but we, Claire mentioned it earlier. Is CM Punk was a, was a highlight of the episode? As I'm not surprised. Oh, I love how they can just go between overly long fights to letting one person just monologue for like ten minutes. Oh. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. I liked it, and then it kept going. I was like, all right, cut it off, cut it off, we're done. <laughs> well, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> well, you would have liked last week's episode then, because that ends with CM Punk giving this giant monologue uh, in, in in which it ends with his mic actually getting cut. Because Literally cut off. <laughs> he oh, gets, like, the, like the Oscars. No, well, the, it, <laughs> it would be funny like, if you played them off. <laughs> was like that CM Punk was like going off about the company and was like insulting it so like he started to dig into some really personal shit so they cut his mic so like but it, it is that it, it is that kind of gist it was kind of a fun jarring moment like hey we don't have to hear this drag on for another like half an hour um but again this is why I I liken WWE to Shakespeare because it's like it's just this long drawn Vin- out like Vince McMahon stuff. loves these long monologues which again, you 
think the demographic like WWE's would be into that, but they love it. They eat it, I, I, which I imagine like if you're in that arena watching that live yeah, and then getting to it, it's like Rocky Horror in a way. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, especially when you have a wrestler like Punk who is completely comfortable with like mouthing off and improving stuff to, t- to interact with the crowd. Which, like when like when they started chanting for the Steelers, and he's like, "Hey, you, I'm from Chicago, and I never cheer for losers like the Cubs, but I'd sure never cheer for losers like the Steelers." That stood out for me in that regard is I saw someone like front row <laughs> yeah. wearing. It, what looked like an AJ Green jersey, Cincinnati Bengals. I'm a Cincinnati native. I love my Bengals. But even I, I'm, that's a bold move. I've never <laughs> seen anyone outside of Cincinnati or Ohio State, really, even wearing a Bengals jersey by choice because we're garbage. Indeed. <laughs> so why? <laughs> well, now I got to look up how good the Bengals were in 2012. And I spent. <laughs> I, I can promise you, bad. <laughs> that's fair. That's, <yeah. laughs> I can promise. I can promise well, you bad. <laughs> another reason, Claire, we need to get you in the WWE writers' room is 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 like you were very keen eyed for stuff going on in the audience, and I would love to see your version of like getting them involved more with like oh, the proceedings. I was thinking it would be so fun if they had like audience plants. <laughs> Which nope. they they use those on occasion. <laughs> See, I feel like if you do an audience plant, though, like in like kind of how they run things now, it has to be some sort of celebrity that just like happens to be there, and then all of a sudden, like Bing Bang oh, Boom, he's in the- oh god, do they do they do they use that so much when they use when oh. they do celebrities? Oh no! Like ugh. I mean, I guess I get it, but also what ugh. like his great former president Donald Trump? Well, hey, he, he wasn't a former president when he showed up before. He was just a yeah. stupid reality show host. <laughs> and then, and then for see what really cracks me up about like Donald Trump in the in WWE is like you were telling me about the Rosie O'Donnell fight, and they didn't have Trump himself in it. It no, was an they had, actor. No, they had a, they had an actor play Trump. Which is weird because other times he's actually gotten in the ring because he's gotten in the ring to beat up Vince McMahon. Uh, I, I don't think I could put enough air quotes around it. Beat up. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Donald Trump is, 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 is very unconvincing at fighting, I'm sure. And Vince McMahon, we already know, is very unconvincing at playing that he got hurt. Um, Claire, you should see the 90s episode we watched where Vince McMahon got <laughs> got he yeeted got by, by... He got attacked and, he, and, he, and it looked like he had... A, and he acted like he had a seat. He was getting a seizure. <laughs> like the least yeah. convincing seizure on the planet. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if it's because this episode was from 2012, but the aesthetic seems very like stuck in 2007. <laughs> you know, like the color yeah. palette and the guy with frosted tips, and just like Never that attitudes him. about like masculinity and like the men, the the women who have to look like just pure titty meat, and nothing else. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I can't say that you're wrong. <laughs> It seems like Tony Stark <laughs> about to come out of the floor, but you know, Iron Man won Tony Stark. Yeah. <laughs> God, I I Not hate that you're wrong. Not more criminal Tony Stark from uh, hey. Spider Man Far From Home. I said it. Although, I mean, although, no, although you, you, you're not wrong. He would be. He would be. I will say, just as fitting in Vince McMahon's WWE. Yeah, he was. Hmm. But yeah. Anyway, the. Uh, yeah, no, it's got this. There's, there's something about WWE's aesthetic that I can never put my finger on, that feels simultaneously so contemporary, but in such a retro way. I, uh, I don't, I can't. I mean, I think, I think, Claire, you're getting closer than I ever have at verbalizing it, just by like pointing out some of the components that lead to that. But there's something about that video quality and about, like you said, the color palette that just. It's this it's that digital camera thing that makes the color tints like orangey. Mm-hmm. That was used a lot in the early 2000s because digital uh, videography and filmography was becoming cheaper to use than film. So they used it a lot more and it makes it sort of look like a certain time yeah. period. Makes any sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. A lot of, if you watch a lot of movies from like around. 2002 ish to around like 
2011 or something. A lot of them are tinted a little bit orange or tinted a little bit blue, and it's through digital photography and color grading. Yeah. Uh huh. Film studies degree, anyway. Yeah. I, I, I do math. I appreciate I can do that. I got another another perspective. I'm so happy you're bringing to this because this is something I've been trying to put words to, and just you pointing out that like mm -hmm. those little technical specs is like oh you see okay i buy that because wwe went hd in 2008 and they really didn't change their aesthetic after they yeah. did that yeah ever so, early hd digital looked a lot like that yeah shit well there we go yeah. okay thank you you've like answered an age-old question for me i appreciate why it. wwe looks like that yeah, why, why? Impossible three, and then you'll you'll see some familiar looking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I love Mission Impossible three, but it, the color grading is really annoying in that way. So. <laughs> no, I can appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I I'm just trying to wrap because like because usually like how Austin and I will do these like kind of back halves are like we we will we like run it down bit by bit and just kind of like talk about all like the major happenings, but like this. There's so, like, much random weird shit to wrap your head around that, like, it's way too much to talk about, but also it's, like, you want to talk about all of it. And I just, I'm trying to wrap my head around all of the weird, because that was just, it was so bizarre the whole way through. And I shouldn't um, be surprised. We had, we, had, we had Kane wanting to eat a dog. <laughs> yes, I forgot. <laughs> ugly dog. Yeah, I think Claire His was, like, was it, fucked up. It was like it was like supportive of of, of Kane eating the dog because Claire was over here like like just being like that is an ugly dog. Yeah, I missed that. I might say that <laughs> because my golden retriever is becoming mildly TikTok famous now. Oh, oh. videos of her wanting to eat our food. So oh, look at you, look at look at you, Miss Fancy. I'm not. Uh, she's Miss Fancy, and she knows it. Hey, well, hey. you know what? As long as as long as you know that that's what's important. But yeah, no, um, Kane and Daniel Bryant, uh, had uh, exchanged Christmas presents, even though Kane hates Christmas, but I know how much Lord, it means to you. That was see, a Kane, Kane, <laughs> see, I, would, I would play that kind of thing up more if I was in charge of it, how it's like, I hate Christmas. But you know what? And considering what my friends enjoy, I think it's important like it's a... Uh, yeah, we're at this. Kane is at this stage of his career where he isn't really concerned about being scary anymore. <laughs> I mean, if, if if we're talking about like Claire's Claire's um Claire's analysis of this is camp, like Kane's kind of the embodiment of that more than anyone else in this episode. I think yeah. like he think about it. He makes fire shoot out of the pillars. Um, and he's he looks all scary, but he's he's really just a sweet little cinnamon roll at heart who's and, just so and happy just, and, just, and, he, and never uses his fire magic in an actual match. He's he's follows yeah. mortal he follows mortal rules. He respects the rule. He respects the fight. Kane is the most Kane is the most fabulous queen on this roster. I I think I think it's, it's absolutely I think it's absolutely wonderful. All the um. All the all the uh, wonderful uh, wonderful moments he gets with his best friend. Oh, mute! Oh, he's okay. got a he's got a mute. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, <laughs> little brothers. Um, I really need a, like a do not disturb sign on my door. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like what else is? Um, okay, we, um, we, hmm. what, is, what else is there worth making fun of, I think, is the real question. Um, I don't know, I feel bad for those people who have to sit in there for, like, over three hours. Yeah. As someone who sat, yeah, I've, I've sat in those three hours a couple of times. It just, it just seems like it seems fun at first, and then you're like, Yay. I will say, yeah. I would probably find seeing this live more engaging than I would like going and sitting yeah. through a whole ass yes. like football game. I can I can confirm that that you know live it's a lot more engaging than it ever is when it is when it's on TV. You know, all things equal. But you know, I would have spent all of my money on stadium like corn dogs and soft pretzels and stuff. I did. I mean, valid. <laughs> but it is a law. But it is yeah. 
Raw is long and padded at this point. We had to get a freaking ten minute. I guess we should talk about this. Is the is they do they they do the the uh, you know the highlights from the tribute to the troops show. Oh, except yeah. except the only thing they show is when they do a Muppet skit. That was confusing to me. Yeah. Oh they're, yeah, the Muppet. So, they were pressuring poor Kermit so much. They're like, "Hey, did you fuck Miss Piggy?" And he's like, "Oh, oh," and they're like, "Come on, you fucked Miss Piggy." And he's like, "I don't, I don't, I don't." <laughs> <laughs> You're not even wrong. No, that's literally what happened. Poor man, breathe. That was so good. Like, and then like, this people was like, "You fuck me, right? Right? Right?" Like, what? <laughs> Stop cleaning up on him, please. Like, like, like Claire and I are both giant Muppet fans, so like, so like anything that like that Muppets show up in is like hell yeah. But also, I'm just sitting there like, what? It was so aggressive. <laughs> he, seemed like, he seemed legitimately scared. It, like it just it it I was kind of sitting there baffled because why are we dragging them into this like like why are you bringing in Kermit the Frog just to like have your wrestlers yell at him about like whether or not he's put a ring on it yet like <laughs> but like, it's also weird because considering the live element and the fact that Muppets are only half a thing they have to be like behind a wall for no reason yes so, the the wall which, thing yeah because like because too like. You would think if you're gonna bring the Muppets into WWE, you would like have it be thematic in some way. Like these are people who thrive off doing silly variety show shit. So and like, if, yeah, like there can't be also, and they're like a whole element of theatricality. But they, it feel so like so. There's a billion things you could have them, you could do with the Muppets and WWE that would make so much sense. But instead, we just gotta drag them into like the WWE's weird sense of like soap opera drama <laughs> bullshit. And then, and then that guy was like, "Have you married Miss Piggy yet?" And it's like, actually, he has several times, but <laughs> yeah, that doesn't count now. And yeah, then, for some and reason, they're like, they're like, you know what the kids love? The will they or won't they for Kermit and Piggy? <laughs> <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's what the no, kids. That no, man, no, no, man, no. Vince McMahon really is outside of the bubble of what the of what no, of what no, everyone. No, it's not what the kids. He's like, He's like shaking and freaking out. He's like, ah! like no, no, David. This isn't what the kids <laughs> love. This is what the troops love. <laughs> no. I don't think I can emphasize enough that this entire skit that we're talking about is on their like support the troops, the USA Raw Raw show. And then, Vince- and then, and then another wrestler comes in out of nowhere for no reason <laughs> and calls his baby ugly. <laughs> Just so he can get punched out by the first wrestler. <laughs> and then the first guy punches him in the face on the spiggy's behalf. Well, he just came on stage to interrupt just to say that she's ugly. One episode in, and we already broke Claire. So <laughs> Why is Claire? I don't know. I, I again, it's just it's just the weird psychosis of WWE where we have to create where we have to create drama, and that drama then has to be resolved by punching it. Punching. Mm-hmm. But clearly, like Miss Piggy was going to do it, but because she is half of a puppet behind the wall, <laughs> she can't she, do well, it. She's the honor guest. Well, because well, because because it looked like see, I I could have seen her doing her like karate yeah. chop thing that they have her do on the show. That would have been fun. But like, but. I do, I do get a kick out of of Triple H, or no, not Triple H, the Miz being the like Miss Piggy, Miss Piggy, you are my honored guest. <laughs> Let me do it for you. Oh, so we, for some reason, we just have the Miz simping for Miss Piggy. Um, well, he keeps asking Kermit if if he's fucked that yet. So. so clearly, what he means to ask is is Are you done yet? So I can get in on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is she single, bro? <laughs> can I or can I not <laughs> put, put it in the pig? That he seemed like Kermit seemed legitimately uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, oh, well, well. Imagine being the actor having to play play Kermit for this the entire <laughs> arena to be like, "Yeah, but fuck Miss Piggy, yeah." Like it's- <laughs> this is plot twist. This is why Steve Whitmire left the Muppets. Like this, this, <laughs> this one incident was like boiling in his mind for like six years, and he was like, "God, 
every day every day I wake up it haunts me. I can't do this anymore. I'm living a facade. This is not my Kermit anymore. I lost him <laughs> the day the Miz asked him if he had put his little green thing in Miss Piggy. <laughs> Turn. <laughs> yeah, so 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 that, that's a little bit of an inside scoop there. Um uh from you to me, folks. From me to you. <laughs> We're all a little broken at this point. God. I yeah. That this whole episode was just like a weird hodgepodge mm -hmm. of everything. And we haven't even touched on still it half the shit. Hodgepodge, but like I said, it wasn't weird enough for me. I wanted them to go weirder. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the weird thing about WWE is like for as silly and as campy as it is, it's also really weirdly self-restrained. Yeah. It's, it's got a sense of like... It, it, it's got a certain point because they don't go like all the way. It feels so it feels sanitized, right? Like something about it, it feels like it's holding itself back. Thank you. Okay, yeah, because that, that's a thing I've been getting a sense of. It's just like at this point, it's so it goes for it, but at the same time, oh no, we can't. This is, oh, no. We have to keep this serious business, folks. Yeah, I I just have I like, and we still haven't even touched on like on like AJ and Dolph being all like. I was going to, I was going to bring that one up, which I feel yeah. like the only part of that that's that a, I really thought was no chemistry. And, yeah. Uh, no. And and uh, I will say that the, there were a couple of bits that I thought was funny in an unintentionally funny way, like the fact that they're watching a, pay, a WWE pay per view by the Christmas fire, and that I thought was actually funny, and I wanted more of that kind of humor. Was and when she, you it was just the rope, like the the titty meat. And like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then she takes off the robe, and it's his t shirt. Like I like that. <laughs> That is that's like that's like the right amount of campy. That's yeah. like that's yeah. directly that's something the you audience. would see on Drag Race. Like that's the kind of humor. That, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That, feel, that feels like, that feels like honestly, you know what that feels like? That feels like a gag from like a, a Disney sitcom, um, but like in the best way possible. Like that needs to be WWE's brand of just like every time you think it's gonna like turn to whole, unwholesome content. No, we just go right back <laughs> to it being like. It's not that it was unwholesome. It's that you thought they were going to go for the easy, ooh, sexy thing again. And then they. Yeah. And then they went don't. the other way. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Oh, yeah. That that was magical. I, I The the, the fight, like the fact that in the final match between between Cena and, and Del Rio, oh. we got them pulling out of Christmas presents. The fact that we yeah. we for some reason had to we we just watched six dudes beating up on each other even though earlier they were beating up on each other just for the hell of it during the lumberjack match the fact that 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 um they they went for the obvious but still very funny gag of of big show getting thrown out of the ring during the lumberjack match and every and all ever all the lumberjacks being like oh after you you can throw them in if you like you can tell yeah. them to get in please <laughs> like it was abject silliness but in this very like uh bombastic random way that's like it it feels like the wwe version of going like lol random xd and it was very hit or miss the entire episode mm -hmm. yeah like and there's a lot of things i could predict in an like when they opened the big box and then he looked upset with what was in it. I was like, it's stuffed animal. It's stuffed animal. Yeah. Ah, clairvoyant. Yeah. Yeah. Ha -ha! Uh, I don't know who the fuck their editor is, but a lot of these shots go on way too long. Like in one of the AJ things where they're like cuddling by a fireplace, an electric fireplace. It's like a TV. And then and, they go, uh, you will log for about 20 seconds on the fire on the electric on like the tv screen and you're like now cut now cut now cut yeah i get it now cut and then it's exactly. like, there's no reason for it to be that long no. uh, it, i 
I, I like, I have to wonder if it's just like, because was that live, by the way? Like, were those segments like, quote unquote, live, like, relative to when they shot the rest of the episode, um, or? I don't know because those are th- they kind of go back and forth on when they do that. Like sometimes they'll pre-tape that stuff and sometimes they won't. So I genuinely don't know. Which like I can only imagine they like kept that in for like maybe extra security to like cut back to the live feed in case they're some. But like, come on, you could have had something more better mm-hmm. to like linger on than the goddamn grainy ass super zoomed in Yule log. On <laughs> it just thing. kept zooming in farther, <laughs> even if it was blurring out. Yeah. which like which like again i also love austin you pointing out that they they filmed like dolph's bedroom or dolph's like house set in the same place they shoot like all the backstage <laughs> office scenes yeah which you could tell they zoomed up to the to the um to the ceiling which which i feel like then could also have a, um should also have a um uh, talk with their DP or whatever. Like, like, guys, come on, this is sloppy. You got to do better than this. I mean, okay, y'all, y'all haven't seen nothing yet. I've had to see them do film a restaurant and a doctor's office, both, both in that, st- in that, in that goofy office. Very, well, very really not a real. I mean, come on, it's so much like porn. Let's, I mean, yeah. I, I compare WWE to Shakespeare. Claire compares WWE to porn. Let's, let's do this. I am I am I wrong? Where it's these uh, you are not remote. I feel like, you, I feel like the place is clearly not the place it is, which culminates yeah. in a climax and it's just uh, fighting. That is that is not that is the that is the most correct thing you've I, I think I you've ever like said. I feel like both are accurate representations of wrestling. Yeah, yeah. the duality. Of, I was about to say the duality. The duel, the duality of McMahon. Son of a gun. But um, yeah, baby. I'm over here. I'm over here shitting on Jerry Lawler, but I'm the one who's made the most like bad puns this whole episode. No, yeah. Well, maybe that one Harvard guy will. Hey, hey, I get the joke. Um, all right um if, if there's anything else anyone else would like to talk about on this i just i don't even i i just like i just i i have this feeling deep in me of just existential something after watching all of this go down that i feel like i just need to release with a general Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Claire gets it. Yeah, yeah this this. Uh, I think I think that's kind of my final word on it. <laughs> this was the episode I expected it to be, where stuff is super silly, stuff technically happens, but it never feels like enough happens. So yeah, but it feels like there's more happening than what we've seen with other with like what we watched watched last week or like with the 90s episode mm-hmm. and maybe that's just because it's so stuffed with filler um maybe that's because it had like a constant through line with the santa shit it did feel like things were happening here but there was just so much that i'm just like what <laughs> what the hell why are like why are we just meandering yeah like yeah, I, I hate to say is that while W while WWE does air holidays, they usually do kind of phone these in a little bit. Mm-hmm. These are never their best efforts are never put into the holiday episodes. Yeah, I which is again why we got to get Claire in the writers' room. She'll make it all better. <laughs> yes, we need to get Claire in here for an episode with it's of a little more consequence. I well, I wanted, we need to get Claire in here for Lucha Underground. That's true. Yeah. I wanted I wanted Claire on this one because I wanted her first episode to be something that would require really not any real prior experience with this. It's a good call. Yeah, like as a one off kind of episode. But then that also means it's not the most <clears throat> you know happening. Well, and the abject silliness too is just. That, that, so... I think that was also a good. That ended up being a good idea. Um. So, so from our special guest, kind of, kind of the final, the final summation. What, what think you? What say you? What have you taken away from this very uh, unique <laughs> experience that we've dragged you into? I've taken away that it's weird and it's gay, but it's not weird enough and it's not gay enough. <laughs> very, very fair. I think that's fair enough. 
I I I want to see weirder, gayer WWE. Um, I and I want to see it now, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm here for it. All so yeah, right. that, that, that's our that's our Santa. All we want for Christmas is weirder, gayer WWE. Yes. That's on my the top of my Christmas list, baby. All right. So next time, David, um, we're gonna do the episode that we've been tempted we that we have been um, hinting at since episode oh. two, mind you. Oh, man. Is in February 1988, 33 million people tuned in to Fox to watch the most watched wrestling show of all time, the much anticipated rematch between Hulk Hogan and Andre the Giant. Get ready for the big dogs, baby. Let's do this. So, uh, we gotta, I guess we got to plug our stuff on the way out, right? Yeah, always. Always. So, uh, so all of you wonderful people can follow the Noobs and Knockouts podcast uh, on YouTube. Uh, we are also now on Spotify. We're okay. on iTunes. Are we on Google yet? We are on Google. I, on, on, on Google, on Google play, find us all the noobs and knockouts podcast on anywhere where you can, where you can find podcasts. Uh, we, we try to put out episodes on a weekly basis. Uh, yep. you can also follow us on Twitter, uh, at, um, noobs and knocks pod. Um, that's, that is, um, the, the shortened Twitter version of our handle. Cause that's what we got to do. Yep. Uh, is Twitter's all about being concise about everything. Hey. Um, I guess I guess also too um if I can if I can pull it up um if you want to um uh, I got I got to pull it up on my phone cuz I can't remember exactly how this one is um if you want to uh um uh if you want to uh send any sort of correspondence to our our show we also have a gmail for if you have like epi- if you guys have like specific episodes you want to request or like general thoughts feelings about the show you can email us at noobs and knockouts pod at gmail.com um and yeah that's kind of where that's all w- where we are everywhere right now it's kind of exciting to be like so digital at the moment yeah claire you want you got anything you want to plug <laughs> Um, I would like a job. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Give employment to our friend, please. She deserves it. Do it. Graduating into a pandemic economy wasn't great. No, yeah. it wasn't. I can just imagine. Well, alrighty, folks. On that note, we bid you adieu. See you guys. <laughs>